When it came down to actually hosting your own event, I was like, God, this is horrible. You're going to figure out really quickly, I hate this or I don't hate exactly. it. You know, there's resistance here and it's here to teach me something. I'm supposed to power through versus this isn't aligned and I'm supposed to pivot. If I don't have peace where there's resistance, then I don't do it. Every single one of us, our purpose is to experience abundance. Every single one of us. We're not here to like suffer. And a lot of people get stuck in that. If you're not happy right now, you're doing it wrong. The safety that I thought came from finances actually doesn't. How can you not be grateful? You're making all this money, you have an amazing team, and you're over here saying you don't want it. I had to overcome other people's mindsets to come in to what I really wanted. That's pretty powerful in this mm -hmm. question of what do you really want? Kayla, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Oh, I'm so excited to I, be here. I actually cannot believe it's taken this long for us to do a podcast together. I know. It's so weird. Like you're coming on mine tomorrow. That's it's actually just rude that we waited this long, but it's gonna be so fun yes. because I, I actually feel this sense that you and I have been in similar seasons of some transition. Yes. That's number one thing we have in common. The other thing is we're supporting spouses who recently in recent years have gone into creating their own business, yes. which is a whole different dynamic. There's so many things I can't wait to dive into. How would you describe your current season of life slash business? Oh my goodness. Okay. How would I describe it? Great question. I'm so happy to be here. So it's very different than what I thought it was going to look like, but writing a book and putting that out there into the world, it's like launching another company. And what I realized was I loved everything about writing the book, marketing the book. Like I love this whole thing. Like mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see what happens, how many lives we change. And now I'm like, oh, what's my second book going to be? Because it's really weird how you can't change it. Like now it's done. Like that is the first book. You can't go back and like have another idea and be like, oh, this, nope, that's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, second book. So I'm in that exciting transition of becoming an author. Like so fun. And uh, I'm just really loving being a wife and a mom right now. Mm -hmm. I have my coaching clients and I love that, but I'm really liking like going deep with them, like one-to-one, -one, like mm -hmm. making it happen for them. And then just being with my kids, watching Chase. Like I, I mean, I am so proud of him. Like it's crazy because I about a year ago told him to give up. I was like, just throw in the towel, do something else. Like this isn't gonna work. And he, thank God he didn't listen to me. Like you know, like I'm just so proud of him that he's just like had grit and gone, you know, ah, the distance. Yeah. So anyways, it's been fun to support him. Like I was like, what can I do like to make your life better? And I was like, you know, can I make you coffee in the morning or something? And he was like, actually, I want to eat my lunch in peace. Like, so when you see me eating lunch, don't talk to me. I want to wow. put on a show and I just want to be alone for 20 minutes. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah, I feel bad every time I watch TV because you're so, I'm always like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. make some money. What you doing? It's, right. The kids are at school. He's like, I just want 20 minutes. To I'm like, mm. okay. And so I really bite my tongue. And anyways, but I'm being like intentional as a wife now with that. Yeah. I know that sounds so like what, but yeah, that's no. hard for me. <laughs> I love, okay. This is so, this is so good. And we, so what's, what's also cool is our husbands love each other. Yes. They're also both just like these big, burly teddy bears, teddy yeah. bears, such great providers, such great. Here's, here's what I love about both of our husbands. They're the type of husbands who have been 100% behind us. Yes. Maybe not. And I know you've shared a lot on your podcast and, and the journey of yours and Chase's relationship as you transitioned into network marketing, which is where we first met each other. But what's so cool is that they have really been so behind us. Chase behind a company called Mommy Millionaire, yeah. <laughs> Elliot behind a company called Powerhouse Women. Right. And then now they're really getting to step in and create their own thing. So mm -hmm. I actually take me back to that conversation where you told him throw in the towel, oh. what was going on. And, and I'm actually so grateful you're willing to even share that because here's the reality is I think on the surface, people see us as like power couples going after these big things. There are some really hard conversations going on behind the scenes yes. that most people, it's not appropriate to share the full details of right. that, but there are these moments where you question like, wait, should we continue doing this? Right. So in our family, uh, back in 2021, he decided he was going to step away from Mommy Millionaire and to go all in on mm -hmm. My Abundant. 
And we knew he wasn't going to make any money and it was going to be really right. all on me. He hadn't been making any money, you know, except in Mommy Millionaire. So it was like, okay, that's not going to be any different. But then I was like, it's different. And because I'm doing, I'm running the company by myself and all these things. And I was just like, I need you to make money. And we had not only like, he's not making any money, but he's also investing a lot of our money into getting the software, getting like all this tech stuff built, traveling. Like it was just a lot. And I was yeah. just like, when are you going to start making money? Because, mm-hmm. you know, in our businesses, it's easy. You put an offer out, you make exactly. money. Exactly. Yes. Well, with his, he's like, this is a tech startup, babe. Like, it's not going to happen overnight. And I'm like, oh, like, I have that microwave mentality, right? I want it now. And I just, he kept getting, like, no's and, like, doors shut in his mm. face. And he would talk to people that, like, they were a yes. And then all of a sudden, they were a no. And I'm like, maybe it's a sign you're not supposed to do this. Mm-hmm. Because I just didn't really see the vision. I'm just like, it's not happening. Like, yeah. I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. And thank God now I do, even though there's so much more work to be done in the company. But he's starting to really take off. And I'm so freaking proud of him. But he he almost did. Like, he actually considered, like, calling his business partner and just being like, we need to, we mm. need to close the doors. And, uh, he called a few mentors of, you know, friends that he has in his life and got some really great advice. And then we made a pact with each other that like, you know, if it got too much, like if it really was too much for me to like carry the burden financially for another two years, that's what we made a pact with. Then he would, then two years, yeah. if he still was not bringing in any money, then he would throw in the towel. Yeah. So we're a year later and he is now being able to bring some something home. Bring it's not the full package of bacon, but it's a little yes, bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like one strip. Like yeah. two like two pieces of bacon. That's like <laughs> it's the it's, start of a breakfast. I see the light at the end of the yeah. tunnel, you know? And so I'm so freaking proud of him. But yeah, so that was where it was. We just had that open communication. And mm-hmm. that's one thing that we've learned and you know, being married for 15 years is just like talk about everything, like Mm -hmm. over communicate about how you're feeling, what you're needing. And really what it comes down to me is like safety, you know, is I need to feel safe. And with Chase, yes, he doesn't financially provide right now, but he's doing everything he can, but he does the most important thing to make me feel safe, which is emotionally feel safe, physically feel safe, you know, like mentally my children, like he provides that safety. Like if he's around, Mm -hmm. like I'm always like, I'm good. You know what I mean? And so I'm like, gosh, like this is just a season. And so changed my perspective and we're in a good place now. So true. Okay. Wild. Cause we haven't gotten to catch up in a little while. Just how similar this is to the season that like Elliot and I have been in. Cause Aww. same, they're both starting businesses that just are the type that are going to take a while. Right. They could pay off in huge ways beyond like what I could ever fathom, but I'm so used to having the business where it's like, Oh, I'm short this much. I could just put an offer together tomorrow yeah. and sell it and take care of that need. So this has been a season for me. I'm curious if you're going through any of these other, this similar transitions of really learning how to anchor myself in exactly what you're saying, feeling supported and going to the root of what my needs are. Safety being the biggest one and realizing that the safety that I thought came from finances Mm -hmm. actually doesn't. Yeah. That's actually made up. But for him feeling that he has my respect is his number one need. Yes. So even being able to communicate those core needs mm. has been so beautiful and so powerful. But the way we were living life before where he was in a job and I was, you know, my business was doing great, but I was working more than maybe I wanted to be working. It didn't give us time and space to bring up these things that have actually strengthened our partnership. Mm. But you don't get to always have those conversations when you're just going kind of going through the motions, right? Yeah, and everything's going great. Like you don't have a reason to have those conversations, right? Yes. Until you're like, oh, wait, (laughs) this is uncomfortable. Yeah, I want to change something here. So, so powerful. So, okay, you are also just two people that for Elliot and I, and I can totally speak for him, we look up to you guys so much as parents. Mm. The family, you have the coolest kids. Thank you. In the entire world. And anytime we get to be around your entire family, that's actually the most fun. And you've done this really great job of instilling certain principles into them, like from a from a young, young age, because most of your 
I think all three of your kids have really kind of grown up with their parents as entrepreneurs. Is right. that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So what has that, what have, what have you learned in the journey of raising kids as an entrepreneur that you, you can look around and see maybe it's different than friends or family members who haven't had that, like their kids haven't had that upbringing. Right. I mean, most people that we know don't have a dad that is on for everything. I mean, Chase has never missed anything for our kids. He travels every single weekend. He's in a different state for Cooper for hockey right now, but like also he's just, he's home all the time. And he's always been that way. Like our kids don't know any different. They don't know daddy going to work. They don't know mommy leaving for work. Um, and so it's a true blessing because, you know, you look at what's wrong with families right now. It's that the patriarch, you know, the man is usually gone too much away from his kids and they don't have that influence. I think there was a study that shows that if a woman has faith in God in their family, um, I'm pretty sure it was like 10% of the kids will have faith. But if a man has faith in the family, 90% of those kids end up having faith. Yeah. And so it was like, wow, that's so crazy. The man has so much influence over his household and Chase gets to that for years. I mean, that got to be his full-time job really. And so I used to look at that and go, yeah, I'm the breadwinner and like have an attitude about it. But I'm like, God totally ordained that to happen because like my kids are like, yeah, they are. I'm, I always say they're cooler than me. They are. <laughs> they had a much, they have a much different childhood than how I grew up. Mm-hmm. And it's because they feel safe and loved not only by one parent, but two. And they just, you know, go after their dreams because they think they can. I mean, they don't believe in, in the impossible. You know what I mean? Like they're just like, everything is possible for me because they have those two parents that are constantly showing them, not only telling them, but also showing them, you know, and we talk about failures and that Chase has had in his business. And we're like, well, what did we learn? You know, like we're a very open family. We're always talking about what went wrong, what went right. Yeah. And so our kids are like critical thinkers, you know? Oh, and that was actually the next thing I was going to ask. So other than those open conversations, like what are some of the very tangible things that now looking at the stage that your kids are at, which maybe share their ages too, what do you see has really made that impact in them having that belief in themselves? Mm. Well, they're 13, 11, and nine, which is wild that I have Crazy. a teenager and a preteen. Yeah. It's <laughs> nuts. Like he's taller than me now. So I'm always like, oh why? When did this happen? Uh, but I would say like the number one reason why they believe in themselves is because they know that their source of confidence isn't actually from what they do. Like they have faith in God. And so they believe in, you know, the fact that like they're made in the image of God. And so they were made perfect and whole. And while they might make make mistakes, they might mess up just like us as adults do, that they are covered by grace. And so they could just keep trying and keep doing new things, you know? And so I think that's a really healthy mindset for them to have because so many people grow up and they think they can't make a mistake, Mm -hmm. but our kids feel safe to make mistakes because it's going to happen. And we make mistakes and we constantly apologize. Like, wow, mommy really messed up. Well, they don't call me mommy anymore, but... (laughs) I really messed up, you know, Uh, they don't say daddy anymore. It's so sad. But anyway, you know, like we talk about those things and we're kind of like, okay, like we know you're going to mess up and here's what we want you to work on Mm. next time. Um, but we forgive you, you know, do you forgive mommy for messing up? You know? So we're always talking about like that concept of forgiveness, not only of other people, but forgiving yourself for messing up Mm -hmm. because so many of us, we hold on to that like shame, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm mad at myself. And messing up and doing this and da, 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 and Sally's mad at me, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so interesting how what I'm hearing from that is it's just in those everyday conversations and not a parent yet. I, I can see how, you know, there might be this tendency to try and protect them. Right. So where is that fine line between being honest with them, especially about some of the harder things, but also maybe not introducing fear or not introducing unnecessary stress that is like appropriate for whatever age that they're at. Is there such a thing or is it really like openness in all of it? Well, I think when they were littler, you, you do want to protect them because certain things they could be exposed to their brain always thinks everything is really real. So it's very scary. Like sometimes the video games and TV shows that parents let their kids watch. Cause I'm like their brain cannot handle Mm -hmm. that stuff. 
right? But at this age, I mean, we are very open. I mean, mm-hmm. I taught my kids about uh, sex when they were six years old. Mm-hmm. Like they know what the vagina is. They, you know, like TMI on this podcast. Well, <laughs> it's a women's podcast. Down. We all have one. I know, right? <laughs> but like I taught my kids all of yeah. the things about their body parts and just like, we're not scared of any of these things. Mm-hmm. Like we talk about these things because I want them to always feel safe to yeah. talk about everything with me. And just like, you know, my son now, he's liking girls and girls like him. And we're having very interesting conversations right now. And it's like, okay, oh my gosh. Here we are. Yeah, yep, okay. We're having this conversation right now, Chase. And he's like, oh, okay. But uh, we just really believe that um, we want to teach them how to think, not what to think. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of parents, when you say protect, it's like, okay, you don't protect them by keeping them out of bad situations or from, you know, certain things because they're going to experience it at some point in their life. You need to teach them how to think about the situations that are going to come to them. You yeah. know, when the opportunity arises, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. How do we want them to think about things? Mm-hmm. You know, consequences. <laughs> What's the long-term effect of doing something like this? You yeah. know? So we're just constantly teaching them those types of things. And when it comes to protection, I used to be known as a helicopter mom when my kids were like really? super little, like really? when they were toddlers. Yes. <laughs> And, and then Chase came home to work, like live with us, like, or not live with us full time, but he right. wasn't working. <laughs> he's always lived, just to be clear. Yeah, he's always lived with us. Yeah. But so then he was like, you know, running yeah. the show while I was like building the businesses and stuff. And so they were eating dirt and, you know, like making mud pies all the time and it changed. So it's so fun to see all the different stages and stuff like that. But what I've learned now is that. God really protects them. And so learning to surrender my kids because, you know, with every year that they get older, they still want to know we're there for them, but they Mm want to spend their time, you know, doing other things, hanging out with their friends. And I can't listen and be in on every conversation. So Mm -hmm. I just have to go, God, these are your children. I pray a hedge of protection around them. I'm not going to live in the spirit of fear at all because I believe fear is a spirit that you can take authority over. And then like, just go like, you have them here for a purpose, not for them to live horrible lives. You have them here to do big things. And so they might have to go through some sucky experiences in order to become stronger, right? Like Cooper got cut from his hockey team. And, and that was so sucky to see Mm -hmm. him. Like he's such a great player, but it was like not good enough, you know? So that sucked. I wish I could have protected him from that, but who is he now? He's like the best player on his hockey team. Now, this was like a year ago, because he has to work 10 times harder than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like he's learned that grittiness. Like, okay, you're going to cut me. Okay, I'm going to go work harder. And it's like, I couldn't, like, I don't want to protect him from things like that because it makes him be successful later on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, you guys just are such a model for just... I think what I aspire to be like as a parent and my kids will babysit your kids. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie <will>. is my <laughs> girl. Yes. She is hired at the top of the list. So, but you mentioned how it is very different than your childhood growing up. And yes. I think for people who don't know you, maybe they haven't heard your story. You have an incredible story, especially looking at the life you've created for yourself today. So do you want to share a little bit of that? Cause I want to actually t- now talk about yeah. how that influenced the book that you wrote. Yes. So I was raised by a single mom and she is amazing. She's my best friend. She lives with us now in our little casita, which is like, I'm so happy about. She's amazing. But uh, life was hard. Like she was, she's a different person now than what she was when she um, was raising us. It was hard. She, I had a little brother and uh, she was working as a hairstylist. And so she worked all the time. And I always say, like, I had the favor of God over my life. Like, I don't know how I did not get myself into trouble. My Mm -hmm. brother turned out one way. And anyway, he's not doing as well. Um, He really struggles with addiction. And so um, it's crazy because I'm like, I don't know how. I just never even wanted to do anything bad. Like, Mm -hmm. I was always called a goody two-shoes growing up and Mm -hmm. stuff. And it's crazy how how it all worked out. But I'm thankful it did. But anyway, uh, my dad was in jail most of my life. And, uh, he's still an addict today. So that sucks, you know, cause it's been like uh, 30 years <laughs> of him really struggling with this addiction. But the thing that it taught me was compassion, I think for people. And it also gave me that grittiness. Like, I don't want to turn out like that. 
You know, like sometimes yeah. we have an example of what we want to be. And then sometimes we have an example of what we don't want to be. And so mm-hmm. that was really helpful for me. I was like, okay, how do I not become like him? And so I did that and <laughs> I went to school and got a job and had um, a good life, you know, and then I was introduced to network marketing. And it's kind of crazy because I didn't know I needed that in my life, mm-hmm. but God knew again, like another story of like God knowing yeah. And I made six figures my first year without, and I really say this, like not being, uh, you know, like braggy. I, I really didn't try. I was working as an ER nurse. Mm-hmm. I told people about it. I posted on Facebook and then people were like, how'd you do it? And I'm like, well, <laughs> then it grew. Right. But I just still feel like that was God. He was pulling me and plucking me to go on a platform of influence to yep. then really live out my purpose, you know, um, because the ER nurse, it wasn't my purpose. You know, it was something like I knew, Hey, if I am a nurse, I'm always going to have a job. So I'm always going to be able mm. to pay my bills. So we're not going to be on food stamps. So that's what I need to do. Yep. You know, that was like my way I built my life, which isn't really inspiring, <laughs> you know, yeah. cause it's not really living the life that you want. Yes. So, but that goes back to why, you know, I just, I hated seeing lack. It was just lack everywhere when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. Which kind of, and I'm, I'm curious because I don't know the full story of what inspired you to write the book that you wrote, but getting clear on what you want <laughs> is really what it's about. So tell us a little bit about what did inspire you to say, because writing a book is, it, it's a project. It's yeah. a spiritual a whole transformation in the process. Yeah. So what was it that said, okay, yes, I, I have a book in me and why did, tell us what you decided to write about and why? Well, I'm in the book. I teach my take seven coaching method and, uh, I didn't realize even I had a coaching method by the way, until I was writing the, <laughs> like, until I got the book proposal, you yes. know, I, was like, I have a coaching method. Yeah. How, what is the way, like, what did I have everybody do in order to become a millionaire? Cause that was really the thing I was working deep with one-on-one clients mm-hmm. and every one of them would become a millionaire. It's like, there's something you did. And it wasn't build a website. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't any of that stuff. It was Mm -hmm. all the inner work that we did so deeply with each other for like a couple of years. And so, and that's how that came to be was I was like, gosh, I want to make sure everybody has this in their hands because they could do it on their own. They don't have to hire a coach in order to do that. Even though hiring a coach is great, takes you there faster. Okay. But I wanted to write a book because that was a goal of mine, you know, back 10 years ago when I first started making some success in network marketing. I'm like, oh, like everybody had a book. Like yeah. that, you know, you probably remember it's yep. like everybody had a book. I'm like, I want to have a book. And like, I would dream and kind of ideate, like, what would the book be? Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm like, gosh, it's not just my life story. Like, how is that going to impact people? And, uh, eventually I found myself in network marketing, making a lot of money, And going and going, I absolutely hate this. Like, I don't want to sell another protein shake to save my life at this point, okay? And I was like, I sound like an ungrateful little bee, you know? Like, how can you not be grateful? You're making all this money, you have an amazing team, and you're over here saying you don't want it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, got another like thing when I was as an ER nurse, like giving that up, I like gave up my license. I mean, I burned the ships. Okay. (laughs) Like I'm not going back. Yeah. So I have to go all in on this network marketing thing. And then here I am. And I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want to have another home party. I didn't enjoy it. But what I did enjoy was helping women become successful. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm like, how do I take that, make a business out of it? And I did that created mommy millionaire, had great success. And the theme was like every time I made a big move. Okay. So I said, here's what I want. I want to, you know, be a network marketer. I want to be a podcaster and have mommy millionaire. And now I, you know, I want to be a real estate investor and an author. Every time there were people that said, who do you think you are? You know, like what, what are you doing? There's too many people doing that. Uh, you know, like a lot of this, the naysayers and stuff like that. And I had to overcome like those other people's mindsets to come in to what I really wanted, you know? And I think a lot of people get stuck there. They don't end up living the life that they actually want because they don't want, you know, Sally down the street to judge her or, you know, they don't want to upset their boss. They don't want to upset their husbands. There's all of these reasons why we don't really live out the life we want. And 
when it came down to it, it's like, what can only I do? Mm-hmm. And I want you like, think about that as you're listening in, like, what can only you do? What is the purpose of all the pain and suffering you've gone through in your life? What is the purpose of all of the hard conversations you've had to have mm-hmm. and all the late nights studying your skill? Like you've got to be the one to give that out to the world. And um, if you just went all in on that one thing. And for mm-hmm. me, it's really coaching people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's being able to be one to one. Most people hate that. And I'm like, that's all I want to do is like coach you to success. Yeah. yeah. And help people truly get what they want in life. And so that's how the book came out was I was like, I can't like go (laughs) one-to-one with With every single person. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put it in a book so they could feel like I'm right there with them, but they have this tool really, which is the take seven that can help them get what they want. Yes. Which is interesting because before we started recording, we were talking about events because I I was sharing how we're in a season where we've let go of some of our offers to really go all in on what I really want, which I love doing events. You're like, oh, events. I don't love doing events. (laughs) For me, I've always said, I do not want to do one-on-one coaching. So Mm -hmm. for the person who's listening right now, who feels like they have no clue, how do you even get clear on what you really want? Mm -hmm. Where does that process start? Well, you got to just like start, you know, start doing things and you're going to figure out really quickly. I hate this or I don't hate it, you know? And, uh, I think a lot of people start something and, uh, they're like, well, I started it and I got to finish it and I got to keep going. And I'm like the quickest person to pivot. Like I know mm-hmm. really quick if I hate something. Mm-hmm. And so I love the saying, you know, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Like I know that feeling of when to hold it, when to kind of push through, yeah. lean into the resistance and go make it happen. Because listen, one, one-to-one coaching and like doing that work is hard. It's not comfortable most of the time, but I know that's my sweet spot that, that again, only I can do like. I bring so much to that relationship and no one to fold them. I did my last live event in 2019. Ah, thank you, God. And (laughs) I'm like still, I have PTSD from that, (laughs) honestly. And uh, what's crazy is in 2020, I had 18 events planned. Okay. So I didn't know. For your business? Yeah. For my business. Retreats all over the place. And then the pandemic happened. Mm. We were able to do one event and then the pandemic happened. We already knew, like we had a trip to Bali planned and it was in March and in the end of January, things were already happening in China. And so our guy that does our flights called us and said, hey, you might want to rethink this because like this is going to spread everywhere. And we're like, no, it's not. Anyway, yeah, that was awesome. It's on my YouTube channel. You can watch the real life uh, yeah. <laughs> reaction to how yes. I did that. But it was like God going like, no, like Cause I didn't really want to do any of those events, but I was Mm -hmm. like, well, I have to, because it's a part of this offer and people Mm -hmm. are going to love it. And da, 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 da. And he was like, no, boom. Like I'm going to shut that door for you. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome that he did that for me because Mm -hmm. then it really Mm -hmm. gave you some time to go, well, what is it that I really want? Right. Yeah. And it's kind of, uh, you don't like, I wanted to do a live event so bad because I loved hosting like those little super Saturdays we used to have and all that stuff. I'm like, I love getting on oh, stage. Yes. I like having that mic and going. <laughs> and then when it came down to actually hosting your own event, I was like, God, this is horrible. Now I just went to Jen Gottlieb's event. We both spoke yes, there and yes. I'm like, this is my jam. Like anybody wants me to come speak and go in and out. I'm your girl, but I don't want anything mm-hmm. to do with like all of it, you know, pitching and all that stuff was like, no, I'm over it. There's so much. And and that's such a great uh, example of how you could love one element of it and yes. think, I want to speak on stages. And maybe you're not really getting asked to speak. So you do your own event or a smaller mm-hmm. type of networking thing so you can start to practice that. But you may get to the point where you realize you want to be a paid speaker or mm-hmm. get to come and speak and pitch some other things that you're doing versus hosting the event yourself. So yes. I love that. And you you actually said something really important that I want you to speak to a little bit more of being able to distinguish the difference between there's resistance here and it's here to teach me something I'm supposed to power through versus this isn't aligned and I'm supposed to pivot. So for you or for your clients, how do you walk people through that distinction? Because that's pretty powerful in this mm-hmm. question of what do you really want? Mm-hmm. Well, I always want to like be in alignment with what God has for me. And I believe that we're supposed to be multipliers. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to take authority over our gifts and like give them out to the world. And we're supposed to be fruitful. And so 
first of all, I always ask, I always do that check. I'm like, okay, but is this thing that I want to do, is it in alignment with those things? Like, is it growing people? Right. And is it helping me be a multiplier? Oh, and then the next one is peace, right? You got to have peace. And so if I don't have peace where there's resistance, then I don't do it because, because you've got to have peace. A peace is everything. I think that most people don't have peace. And I know it's like such a sucky feeling because you're in that moment where you're just doing things for the money and you're doing mm-hmm. things because you feel like you have to be doing it. Cause I said, I was going to be doing it. Um, you feel like you're out of integrity if you don't do it. Like there's all these stories that happen in your mind, but peace looks like, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I feel light all in my body right now. And I just have a trust. It's just like a knowing in your body that everything is going to be okay. If I keep going down this path mm-hmm. and Everybody that's listening in right now, you know that feeling. Like it's hard to kind of explain, but you, if you felt it, you know it. And so you've got to wait for that feeling. And if you don't have it, it's like, okay, well, keep taking action, like keep moving forward until you get that feeling, you know, to be like, I'm going to separate or I'm going to keep going, keep pushing through. Mm. One of my mentors just said to me within like the last year about, just that feel, that inner knowing, some people call it intuition, Holy Spirit. I think, you know, we all have our way of relating to it, but she said when it's like the truth, it's neutral. Mm. It's not highly emotional. It's not high highs. It's not low lows. And I thought that was such an interesting way to think about it because oftentimes where I'm causing stress is I'm so in my head about other people's perception of it. Who am I disappointing? But if I go to just the core decision, if there's neutrality around it, it's like you said, it's just that piece of knowing no matter what, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Even if this doesn't turn out the way I thought, or maybe this isn't the right decision, it's going to teach me something that this was ultimately part of the plan. Mm. I feel like that's what that peace, that sense of peace I'm realizing feels like in my body in those moments where even maybe I'm making a decision that other people don't, don't get, do not see. Yeah. But for me, it's it's clear and it's very neutral and it's very unemotional in the decision itself. Sometimes there's emotion around other fears that I have, but the decision itself isn't. Mm. I thought that was so interesting. That is really interesting. Isn't I like cool? it. One time I, uh, this is kind of like off topic, but well, no, it's on topic. But I was going to invest in a program and it was a lot of money and like they were promising all these things. And I was like, gosh, like I I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Mm. And I called Chris harder and he was like, this is how you know if you are supposed to do something right. Like lean into that resistance of paying. It was like a six figure Mm -hmm. thing. Okay. When you wake up in the morning, like would you feel relief or regret if the opportunity had passed you by? And I was like, Oh, okay. I would absolutely feel relief that the opportunity had passed me by. And so that's how I knew, okay, that's a, that's a no on making that investment. Yeah. So there's also like, there's really good questions you could ask yourself too, which maybe you'll find them in the book. I know. Okay. Well, tell us what we can expect to get within the book. Tell us the name. Tell us a little bit about if someone is at the point where they're, they're actually sitting there and they're the perfect person. You wrote the book thinking of them. How would they know that? And then I can't wait to ask more about it. Well, okay. So I have a library at my house. Okay. And I am obsessed with books because everybody that wrote a book is my mentor. You know what I mean? And so I sometimes will just buy people's books and I don't even read them, Mm. but I feel like they're there if I need to like ask them a question. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds really weird. And so it's like, you should absolutely buy the book if you feel like you wish you just had like a business consultant you could talk to Mm -hmm. at any time and say like, how would you deal with this problem? Because the take seven tool is something you could use throughout the day. You could use it during a problem you're going through, or you could use it just for your health. Like it's so incredible. Um, but I go through it in depth. And if you order the book right now, we're we're doing a free course to help people get awesome. what they really want. I break it down. It's awesome. You can go to what do you really want book.com to check it out and see all the little goodies that we're giving away. But I would just say like, if you're that type of person who loves to have books, or even if you like to listen to it on audible, like there's something about holding the book mm-hmm. and just feeling like it's your friend. Mm-hmm. Like that sounds so weird, but my bookies will get it right. You're like, ah, oh, like I, I don't know Kayla, but I know her yeah. and I feel like it's going to help me make better decisions. Like that's what it's like. I, 
always buy like at least like books I love, I'll buy like four or five of them to just keep Mm -hmm. them at the house and I'll give them out. Like right now I have books in my car because I'm so the same way. Oh my gosh. You are. Okay. So like a traveling library. Yes. See where that's where we're the same people. So I went to Cane's. My kids love Cane's (laughs) so bad. Okay. I can't believe I'm that mom that takes them to fast food, but here we are. And, uh, the girl at the thing, she goes, Oh my gosh, I love your color. I have this obnoxious blue on my G wagon and it's my favorite it's color. So pretty. Yeah. I know it's obnoxious. So <laughs> it's fine. She's like, I love the color. I go, Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I'm like, gosh, like this is a good moment to give her a book because she said something about my car and maybe it could be her dream car. It used to be my dream car. And I had the richest man in Babylon in my backseat. I'm like, Cooper, hand me that book. He's like, you're not going to give it to her. And I'm like, yes, he already knew. Like I'm giving it to her. He didn't even have Mom. to. <laughs> You know, like, what do you want the book for? And I just write in it, you know, like chase your dreams and then give it to her. And she's like, oh, what? And I just love, do. I just feel like books spread happiness and like you can give so much to people in a book. So anyway, I'm a nerd. Like I that. love that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I, well, I am that friend too. And even just like the, the best way to support a friend's book launch is buy multiple copies, give it yeah. away to, to friends. So if, if you're buying copies, get a couple extra for your friends. So the book is really framed around these questions, these powerful questions. If you had to pick one question in there that you think is a game changer for people, like they're not thinking through this lens. If you had to signal out like one question that we can kind of like tease people with, what's one of the most powerful questions in the book? Yeah, every one of them is so powerful. But Mm -hmm. I think the first question, it's what's not working for you. Because we're really good at complaining, right? Like we're really good at going, I'm sweaty. I'm, I just did this for the podcast. I'm sweaty. I need some water. Like we're really good at listing out the complaints, but are we going to get anywhere by complaining? No, you're like a crap magnet, right? But there's a powerful way to talk about what's not working for you in your life when you're willing to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So this is why I say, don't write it anything down unless you're not willing to do something about it. So, you know, what's not working for me in my life. You know, at one point the, the network marketing thing wasn't working for me in my life. You know, having a team of 90,000 people that they expect all this stuff, you know, all the time, it's not working for me anymore. I don't want to live this way. If, if I have to live like this for the next five years, mm, torture, Okay. And I know that sounds like, so it sounds like, ah, I know some people are going to be pissed, but here's the thing is like, what's not working for me in my life. Uh, I don't like being so easily accessible to so many people. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. So many people feel like they can just have access to me because they bought a protein shake. Like, I don't like that. Like I'm actually a very private person And I want to put more boundaries in my life. So it came, you know what I mean? It started with, this isn't working for me, but really like, it's this, it's that like, I want a bubble. I want a, like a bubble of protection around me and my family that nobody gets access to. Mm -hmm. You know, and this came from after I opened my home up for seven years, Mm -hmm. every Tuesday night, having randoms in my house. Like what? I would never do that now, (laughs) but like that was our life, you know? And so I was like, gosh, why don't I like that? Like, So then you start to go through and you go deeper, deeper, deeper. It's like, well, like safety is the most important thing to me. Safety. Okay. And I don't feel emotionally safe anymore with this many people feeling like they have access to me. And I don't even feel like physically safe. There was one point, I don't know if if, like, I'll share this with you. I had somebody sleep outside my house, an armed bodyguard, because I don't know what it was. Like I started to really get into my head around, like, I just did not feel safe. Like I felt like somebody was coming. I know. Right. Like I was messed up for a while and I was like, okay, we got to get out of this because what I really want is to be a great mom that gets to experience life, have so much joy. I can't do that. If I have, you know, all these people that think they can call me all the time, think they can stop by my house to buy some protein shakes. Like I can't do it anymore. Yes. (laughs) No, I mean, that makes perfect sense because what it does is it's a question and I I can't wait to go through the way you have it written in the book, but, but it makes you get clear about then what about that thing that isn't working at a macro level yes. isn't working so you can design what does because yes. what was hard for me and I don't know if you went through this at all when I stepped away from network marketing which was my first business my first you know there was a lot of recognition not even for me at the level that you were at within the company a lot of recognition a lot of money a lot of the things that were once my dream mm-hmm. and were a lot of other people's dream Yeah. So to have that space, and that's why I love questions. I love books that pose really powerful questions because it 
has me slow down Mm -hmm. and start to evaluate my own circumstances through the lens of, is this what I want Mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. And there have been times where I've realized I went down a path that it was actually what someone else wanted or even a previous version of me. Right. But I'd love if you could speak to this because I don't think there's a lot of conversations around the fact that it's okay for what you wanted in one season to not at all look like what you want in this season. Oh my gosh, I've gone through that so much. I'm going through it right now. Yeah, I think that in order to truly become who God wants you to be, there's going to be so many versions of you. And you can't hold on to who you used to be in order to go there because it's too heavy. The more and more like I spend time with God and I realize like my purpose and I look at everything I do through the lens of my purpose, like Mm -hmm. why am I here? I believe I'm here to spread like awareness around freedom and how, you know, finances are just a tool Mm -hmm. and how like you're all like every single one of us, our purpose is to experience abundance. Every single one of us, we're not here to like suffer. And a lot of people get stuck in that, like. Like if you're not happy right now, you're doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. You you are, right? And so I want to keep spreading like, hey, like freedom is easy. Find the formula. And yes, finances happen to be included in that in our day and age. And so that's just, there's a formula for that. And so I just believe that like I've got to go out there and I've got to share, share, share like all the time. But how I do that might change. Right now I'm doing it. I love my podcast. I don't ever see myself changing. Like I love podcasting, right? Same. But, uh, and I hope it doesn't change, right? But like also giving yourself permission to go like, hey, maybe in 10 years, I won't want to do it. You know, I don't know. But like giving yourself permission to go like, I'm going to do what I want to do. Because that's true freedom. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it with who I want to do it with. And that's like, that's abundance. Being able to say yes and no. Ooh, being able to say yes. And no, Mm -hmm. I feel like the longer I go into this entrepreneurship journey, the no's feel even more abundant than the yes's. Oh my gosh, yes. I love saying that. Times 10. I love saying that. (laughs) It's so good. Okay. So remind us again where we can buy the book and also where we can connect with you. Okay. So what do you really want book.com and then on social media, I'm Kayla.craft, C-A-Y-L-A dot C-R-A-F-T. And I'll just share this from like a friend perspective. Kayla's account is one of those that I go to on like the day that I need to remember like who the F I am. (laughs) You are, you're that friend that is loving while also being like this fierce voice for, okay, come on, let's do it. Like we're on this earth for a very short period of time. We do all have a purpose. Even if you're in a season of transition or pivot, It's just enough to remind me like, oh yeah, I got this. I can do this. So I'm just so grateful to have you here to get this chance to sit down with you. Me too. And I have one more question. And this is a fun one to ask, especially women who are my actual real life friends, because Uh, I know I don't pause to acknowledge myself as often as I could. Uh, We just call it your powerhouse moment. So it could be anything big or small that right now, You just want to take a moment to acknowledge yourself for, like when I say, what's a recent powerhouse moment you want to celebrate with us? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? My recent powerhouse moment. Oh my gosh. Not losing my mind on my children. No. And (laughs) that's a very real one. All the mobs are nodding along right now. Uh, I think that it's probably in little moments that are happening every day now, but Mm -hmm. I feel so good in my marriage, probably for the first time ever. Like before I've always loved Chase, but now it's like a different feeling of, um, like even he's the most stressed I've ever seen him be. And so it's, he's has a little different personality, you know, a little snappiness to him lately, but I'm actually, I think my powerhouse moment is being able to see him for who he is is truly like how God sees him powerful. Like he might have his like flaws, you know, throughout the day and like mess up, but I just don't let those things get to me anymore, which I used to be like, who do you think you're talking mm-hmm. to? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> coming back hot. But now I truly am able to see him like God sees him when he's in his struggling moments. And I think that's powerful because it's calling him to the height that he is truly destined to be. And it makes me happy. 
I love that. That's such a powerhouse moment just to see the way you two show up for each other, support each other, Mm -hmm. and then show up for your kids is such an inspiration to me and Elliot. And I know everyone who's listening. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you.